Hello, in today's video we'll be travelling through Japan on the Takedo Shinkansen line on board some bullet trains. We'll be travelling on Hikari, Kodama and Sakura services. I'm going to tell you all about the JR Pass and I'll wrap up by chatting you through the Soika IC card and how to use them. It's easy to find your way to a Shinkansen platform. Follow the signs and graphics like these in Hiroshima and Tokyo station and they'll take you to the gate line. The walkways, stairs and even the lifts will all direct you. The departure boards are also super clear. Train types are colour coded with the train name and train number, followed by the departure time and which track you'll be departing from. I travelled on various N700 trains including Advanced and Supreme and they all look a little bit like a spaceship train with these super long noses. Now although the rolling stock looks the same from the outside the trains come in formations of 16 and 8 cars. The train name refers to the service pattern with Nozomi and some Hikari trains having 16 cars and Mizu, Sakura, Kodama and some of the Hikari trains in an 8 car formation. There are really clear signs on the platform barriers to let you know which car will stop in front of you and there's also a seat diagram to advise which door you should enter to be closest to your reserved seat. The Japanese are way better than the Brits at queuing and boarding trains is no exception. Here's the queue to board our Sakura train from Shinosaka to Hiroshima. Note the platform edge barriers opening around 10 minutes before the scheduled departure. If you look at the bottom right, you'll see the queuing lanes painted on the ground. They have these in metros and on most railway platforms. The train isn't always level with the platform, so a little lift of your suitcase is sometimes required to get on board. The first thing I noticed, the doors to get on are a little bit narrower than those that I'm used to in Europe. Entering in car 16 here, you'll note that all the seats here face forwards in this ordinary car. It's a 3-2 layout, and all the seats do line up with the windows. We've booked two seats sitting next to each other, so let's chat about how we did that with our JR Pass. First up then, what is a JR Pass? Available in Ordinary, which is Standard Class, or Green, which is First Class, the JR Pass is similar to an interrail ticket and allows unlimited travel on all Japan railways, or JR rail lines, in Japan, and comes in durations of 7, 14 or 21 days. You'll need to buy it online before you travel to Japan and once you've done that you'll be mailed an exchange voucher. When you arrive in Japan you'll then need to visit a tourist JR ticket office to exchange your voucher for your ticket and away you go. Beware though the queues at the airport when we travelled in April 2023 were around two and a half to three hours to exchange your voucher. Most Tokyo station queues also exceeded 1 to 2 hours in most days, but we looked out and waited only 30 minutes at Shinjuku station at 5pm in the evening. A quieter time and I recommend you do that. Although not mandatory, it is recommended that you do book a seat reservation as the trains do get pretty busy, especially on the Shinkansen and especially at peak times in the year. You can do this at these ticket machines which are in every JR station. You'll need your JR ticket and your passport number as the two are linked to enable you to use them. If travelling together like us, you'll need both JR passes and both passport numbers at the same time and that'll allow you to reserve two seats together. Simply enter the departure and arrival stations. The stations will start to populate as you type. Enter the date of the train up to two weeks in advance and the time that you wish to travel.
The machine then brings back all trains that are valid. The green circle that's here means that seats are available. Press this and choose an ordinary seat. Once there, you can view the seat map and you're free to choose any vacant seat. You'll then be issued with your reservation tickets. These ticket machines can get really busy. Just take a look at this queue in Kyoto station. To enter the Shinkansen platform areas, simply pop your ticket through the gates. Note, you don't need your reservation for this part, so just keep that in your pocket. Now, as you might expect, we pulled away exactly as time to depart. Now we're on our way. Let me tell you about the cabins and the seats that are on board. As mentioned, the ordinary, which is standard class cars, generally have a 3-2 layout on the Kodama and Hikari lines. Every window lines up and the windows have blinds that come down to block out any bright sunlight. On Hikari and Sakura trains, there's a forward and rearward facing adjustable air vent over each window. There's also a handy shelf for your elbow. Just be careful of your phone on here though, I did see someone's fall off. I should also mention on the Kodama train, there were no air vents. There's also two coat hooks per set of seats. For charging, I saw a variety of options. On Hikari and Sakura trains, we had one socket per row along the wall. However, on the Kodama, each armrest had a separate power socket built in, which I guess is actually better because it means there's more of them and they're a lot easier to access. I really can't underestimate how much legroom there is in between the seats. Here you can physically walk between the rows, spin, do a wiggle if you wish. Look how much space we have. The tray table comes down independently of the seat's recline of the passenger in front, meaning it's always in the same position in front of you. Just so much space. I've reclined the seat in front here to give you an indication of how much room there still is. Although you can't really do a dance in that gap anymore, there's still plenty of room. As you can see, the tray table is more than large enough to get some work done. The armrests in the seats also fully retract, meaning that as a couple you can spread out and here's the latch to recline the seat. Again, far more than any European train I've ever been on, and far better than any domestic economy flight options that were available to you. If traveling from Tokyo towards Kyoto or Osaka, make sure you sit on the right-hand side of the train. This gives you the best chance of seeing the stunning Mount Fuji, which we're lucky to see here, passing through at around 240 kilometers an hour. So far, I've shown you the trains running from Tokyo to Osaka, but we traveled further down to Hiroshima on board a Sakura train. And here's where I was really surprised. This is one of the ordinary cars, and it's in a 2-2 layout. Admittedly, a little retro and a little dated, but check out these lovely recliner seats. We have a retractable wooden padded armrest, and these cup holders, perfect for a beer, 
which I've got in mind here. Now I did have a little bit of an explore and not every ordinary car was like this one. Here's the unreserved car for example. Let's chat facilities on board next and these were common across all the N700 trains that I travelled on. Whilst there was a trolley cart moving up and down the train, there's also a vending machine. Both on the seat back and in the vestibule areas, there's this handy train map showing you where things are like toilets and bins. The trains also feature smoking rooms. The bathrooms on board were spacious and were clean. And as with every toilet in Japan, featured the console to operate it including a button to put the seat up and back down. And a handy guide just in case you forget how to use it. In addition, there's what's described as a powder room and a separate sink area, which I assume is to aid with washing your hands after using the urinal, which is outside of the main bathrooms. Now, as you're probably aware, it's become kind of a must do to get a bento box and eat it on the train. We took a 7am train out of Tokyo station and we were a little bit disappointed that before the gate line, most of the shops were closed. We found this one though, offering a variety of boxes, including themed ones for kids and a selection for the grown-ups. My tip here, don't be disheartened by all the shops that are closed. Just wait until you pass through the Shinkansen gate line there's a lot more options there and most of them are open early. This is what I went for and it was pretty filling and tasty. This is what Morven went for, which I was disappointed in given that it's the wrong type of train and we're not traveling on the type of box that she got. Tasted good though, I assume. So the other thing we need to chat about is luggage and what you can and can't bring onto the train with you. There's no security to get on board Shinkansen trains unlike flights, so that's a big plus. So you do need a specific reservation for your luggage if it exceeds these dimensions. Our bags were big, but not too big that they wouldn't fit on the shelf above the seats. With this reservation then, you place your luggage at the rear of the carriage here for which you need a reservation for the seats immediately in front. Why is there a tray table here, you might ask? Well, check out this pedal here under the seat. This allows the crew to change the direction of the seats at the end of the line, so everyone can face forwards. How cool is that? We're approaching the end of the video, but there are two more things that I need to tell you about. Luggage storage lockers and the Soika IC card. If you're traveling, the chances are you need somewhere convenient to leave your bags. Tourists and locals need this facility, so every, and I do mean every station we visited, had either coin or IC card operated storage lockers. They're priced at 700 yen for a large one, 500 yen for a small, and coin lockers do require 100 yen coins to operate them and for those who usually get a key. For the IC card operated ones, once your bag is in, you simply slide the latch down, tap the screen, pay with your IC card and you're done. And then to release, simply select remove, 
tap your IC card and the machine knows which locker is yours. IC cards of which Soika is one type are super easy to use and available on your phone or at stations. You can only use cash though to top these up in the stations we found, but on your iPhone you can pay by card. And if you have bought a physical one and wish to add it to your phone, that's super easy too. You can transfer it or buy a new one via the apps on your phone and top up as much or as little as you like. I also really like that unlike Oyster cards, say in London, your Soka card tells you in your wallet exactly how much you're being charged and where you tapped in and where you tapped out in real time. And finally in today's video, I can't talk about trains in Japan without mentioning Eki stamps or train stamps. Every station we visited had a stamp, so make sure you bring a blank notebook. You can stamp your way through the country. It acts as a great souvenir and shows your train pilgrimage if you like. That's it for today's video. I really do hope you found it useful for your trip. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and if you do have any questions, let me know down in the comments. Thanks and we'll see you next time.